All right, time to tackle the sequence in Lasso. Now, right after spawning in from the last mission, Pelican Down, we're going to be off to the side of the Command Spire here. And we're just going to make our way over to the console. But instead of going into the main area, what we're going to want to do is we're just going to hop up on top of this platform above the main console there. And that way we can just take start taking pop shots at some of the bandits with our rocket launcher and start picking them off one by one. There's going to be a bunch of jackals, elites, and grunts that you're going to have to deal with here. And your only threat is going to be the elite that's going to be close to the door that's right below us. As he'll start throwing grenades and if you poke out a little too much he'll start shooting at you with the heat wave. But you just shoot a couple rockets at him and then try and stun him with the dynamo and shoot a couple more. And that should be enough to kill him so long as you can land a direct hit or two and that your rockets weren't too far off their points. But from here, we're just going to keep shooting as many rockets as we can. It's not going to kill or take too long to kill each person. One to two rockets for each grunt. There's plenty of explosion canisters that you can take advantage of here. You can see I'm not even really trying to do that in particular, but there's just so many of them in this area that just shooting your rockets will eventually take care of them. Now in this section it's kind of annoying just because of, the, because of how much cover there is. Some of the enemies are inevitably going to be hiding behind there and you won't even know they're there for a bit. So this grunt was just hiding behind the wall and I thought I cleared him out. But since it's just one grunt we're just going to melee him back, get our full shields, and we'll progress through the level. Now after activating the console command and watching the cutscene happen there, we're going to actually turn our way back and activate the bridge. And you just have to walk up to the bridge, or it'll already be activated, my bad. But we're going to walk up to the bridge to trigger the banshees to start flying towards us. And then we're going to run back and take a cover behind this little thing next to the bridge here, these little mini walls. And we're going to hop up on top of it and try to grapple uh, to the banshee and hijack it. Now it's very important that you want to keep this banshee for as long as possible. In this particular video I ended up losing it after the second spire, which is very unfortunate because that just means you have to use some of the warthogs and other resources available to you in order to travel these long distances. But you want to really make sure that you're taking good care of your banshee because if you do that you just cut down on travel time. You're not going to get hit on your way there with other kind of banished during travel time. But we're going to fly up right next to this spire that's right closest to us, and we're actually going to fly up to this mountain here. The reason we're going up to this mountain is, A, we want a safe spot to park our banshee, so that way we can hold on to it longer. doesn't matter necessarily where you parked, so long as it's near this area. You just got to keep a mental note of where you parked it at. And we're going to scale this mountain because there's going to be a Spartan core that we're going to be picking up, and this is going to be the final one that we need for our cheese strat we'll be taking care of. It'll be guarded by a couple, by a single elite and a couple grunts. We're just gonna stun them, shoot a couple rockets at the elite, and then pull out our sniper to finish the job. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the grunts in the area. Get our shields back real quick and start popping off on the grunts here. All right, and now you're able to get your Spartan core. And what we're gonna do. You can see I grabbed right before I grabbed the Spartan Core, I swapped out my sniper for the sword. That is a very important thing. You really want that sword. And it's very convenient that the Elite is there. Because now that we have our thrusters fully upgraded, every single time that we use our thrusters, we gain four seconds of active camo. That is huge, and I cannot stress that enough how important this is for Lasso. This will trivialize many sections in Lasso and make previously difficult enemies such as hunters a joke in comparison. As you can see now I'm literally just running up with my sword. He didn't even notice me. Instantly kill two, three grunts here and I'm going in for the fourth. And we're just going to keep progressing through like, like so. And we're going to be doing this for pretty much every spire with a couple of exceptions because of vehicles that are in some of them. But you're not going to have to worry about getting hit too much anymore because even if you get hit the next time you hit an enemy with your sword, you're going to start regaining your shields. So you're able to much more comfortably manage large groups of banished just sitting in a tight cluster as you're going to be constantly regaining your shields over and over and over again. 
And to top it all off, since we're zipping around with our active camo, anytime you go behind cover for a period of, I want to say, is about two seconds, if they are out of your line of sight for about two seconds and you're using your active camo ability, they will lose track of you. And unless you walk directly in their path, they won't see you. Now the only real major threat in this section here is that shade turret. And we're just going to throw our dynamos and we're going to pull out our rocket launcher. Because it's gonna, not going to go well for us if we use our sword. So we're going to pull out a rocket launcher here. Just take a shot, destroy that. I was reloading just in case I need it again. And we're going to continue on through, meleeing with our sword. And poking off on each of these enemies here. Now grunts with full shields, depending on where you hit them with the sword, will usually only take one to two hits. And brutes, depending on what rank they are, will take two to three, Maybe and the higher ranks will take four or more. But generally three hits is on average for both elites and brutes. Elites can sometimes take four depending on what they are, but we'll be covering that a little bit more in the later spires as there's a special thing you kind of need to do for elites because they will pull out their swords as well like i said pretty much all the spires are just going to be rinse and repeating this strategy here where you just bounce back and forth between cover using your active camo and spamming your thrusters and you're just going to be going in meleeing constantly and after making your way through the spire there and activating your cutscene, we're going to make our way back to the Banshee that we had parked on the base of the mountain here next to the Spartan Quarry we grabbed. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to make our way to the next spire. And that one will be, and I'll show you on the map here, it's going to be the one more to the south on the opposite side of the command spire that we were at. Now I'm just going ahead and speeding up the footage here just for the sake of it's just travel time. But one thing to note here is on your way to this spire in particular, there is going to be a Banshee patrolling almost to the spire. He'll make it most of the way, but you see this is actually how I ended up losing my Banshee here. Ended up getting it destroyed right as I made it to the spire. Very unfortunate for me because that means I now have to travel through to the other spires after completing this one on foot or by others, some vehicle means. So if you happen to keep your Banshee throughout all the Spires, you can kind of just ignore my travel time for the rest of the Spires here and just make your way directly to each other Spire. And you can feel free to skip around in the video this way. But the main thing you want to worry about in this Spire here is the Wraiths. They're going to be an annoying problem, especially if the one there happens to be closer to the entrance of the Spire. Sometimes he doesn't like to go up close, sometimes he does, it just kind of depends. I've had a couple runs where he was right up next to the door, and a couple runs where I didn't have to worry about a wraith at all. It kind of just depends on where they like to go. So this is where the trick with the elites kind of comes into play. As you can see that elite had the sword, and that's something we don't want to get hit by. If you have full shields, you'll survive one sword hit, and so long as you hit him immediately after, you'll get your swords back. And our main strategy is we're going to be boosting into the elite and then immediately dashing out after hitting him and then boosting back in to hit him again in between our sword times. Now it's also worth noting that you didn't actually have to kill any wraiths there. I ended up kind of taking one out just because it was a necessity but you don't have to kill any of the wraiths you will be able to kill them. Uh, you'll be able to progress through just by killing the infantry that is just nearby. Now I'm fast traveling to Fob Golf the first fob that we got when we first went into the open world. Reason for that is since I lost my Banshee, I now have to go and get a Warthog in order to travel to the next fires. Like I said, if you had the Banshee, and you should have the Banshee, you should try and prioritize keeping your Banshee alive or getting a new Banshee as much as possible, as that just saves so much more time, so much travel time that you don't have to suffer through. And normally I'd be going straight north from the spire we were just previously at, but like I said, since I'm a scrub and I ended up losing my banshee, I ended up having to go to this fob and we're going to go mix up our order of the spires a little bit. So feel free to skip around in the video. Again, like I said, if you want to go in any particular order, it doesn't necessarily matter as the strategy is going to be roughly the same for each one. Just go in with your sword, melee each enemy you can, and... The only main difference is the spire that has the two hunters in it, and I'll go over that one as we get to it. But for now, if you did lose your banshee, just feel free to follow the path here, but I'll be speeding up the footage, so 
If you lost it, follow the path I'm taking, and the only real threat you're going to have to worry about is there's going to be a couple banished outposts on the road that you'll have to kind of avoid, and you'll see me get my Grazerback get destroyed, but I ended up just uh, not too far from the next spire in the first place, plus there's a Razorback, or a Warthog, sorry, located on the road not too far from where that major banished outpost is. Now as we approach this next spire, what we're going to do is we're going to start picking off some of the grunts that are just by the road here. Just quickly kill them. One, two sword strikes will kill them both. Kill all of them here. Now one thing to keep in note is that there's going to be two phantoms that are going to be driving by at some point during this spire here. So the first one will show up right away and the second one will come up a little bit later. So we're just going to wait right next to the, where the phantom drops off the first enemy, stun some of them with the dynamos, and try and take out as many as you can as quick as possible before the hunters start approaching over the hill. And these are going to be the big enemies for this spire, and it's going to be kind of a time sink to kill them. But luckily for us with our new strat, it is a lot easier and a lot safer to deal with them. Not as much risk is involved. But we're going to save them for last, so we're instead going to ignore the hunters for now as they're kind of easy to avoid and their shots aren't going to be doing too much damage as since we're going to be dashing around so much with our thrusters they're not going to be able to land their shots as easily. I'm going to keep picking off all the elites and grunts and jackals in the area. Grab your spartan core on here while you're at it. And we're going to be making our way around the spire and you want to get used to that kind of pathing as that is going to be the main thing we're going to do in order to get them to lose track of where we are. And see I got a little too antsy on getting to the phantom here a little too soon and he ended up seeing me i got shot at a little bit but no need to worry since we have our sword we're going to be getting our shields back anyway especially since we're going to be getting the drop on the enemy pretty much every fight since see they're not even aware that i'm there so we're just going to hit our elite a couple times here make sure we kill him again as you get close to them they're going to pull out their sword so you don't want to just sit in front of them the entire time and just keep swinging you want to be a little active with your thrusters so hit him, thrust back, go back, hit him again, and you'll be fine. Because like I said, you can take the one or two sword hits, or sorry, just one sword hit before you die. So you have a little bit of wiggle room to work with. If he hits you once, you'll still fine. And so long as you're quick on the trigger, you'll always hit first. And whenever you hit them with the energy sword, they get knocked back a little bit. They get a little stunned. So they, uh, they won't hit you back right away, so you'll have plenty of time to get your shield back. Now it still is important to use your dynamos even when you're using the sword. The only thing you want to keep track of is you don't want to just be walking directly over the dynamo as you're just going to damage yourself. And if you happen to already be low of shields and you're trying to get your shields back, you don't want to accidentally kill yourself with it. So we're going to be picking off this final dude and then we'll be getting into the big bad baddies of this section, the hunters. Now what we want to do for the hunters is we're going to be shooting our rocket launchers at them and the goal of that is to break the armor that the hunters have in order to expose their weak point on their back. So we want to shoot a couple rockets, it usually takes three or four before the armor finally breaks and once it breaks we'll be in position to use our sword and our sword will be doing a lot of damage when we hit their spine. One more thing to keep in note of the fans or the hunters, sorry, is that they enrage after their partner dies. And that's important to keep track of because if you kill one of them too soon, the other one will get a little bit more jumpy and a little bit more alert. So it's going to be a lot harder to sneak up on them and they're going to be able to find your position a little bit easier. So you kind of want to spread the damage while it's still kind of easy. You can see that one kind of caught wind of me right before I was able to get to him, but that's going to be our strategy essentially is we're going to be sneaking up behind them, running back and forth behind the spire here, and we're going to try and get behind them in order to get a back smack with our sword. After you expose their armor and you get a couple back smacks with the sword, it only takes about three-ish to kill them, which I'm sure as you guys are aware is a lot quicker than what we've been dealing with before by just using the rocket launcher or other kind of explosive weapon in order to take them out. And see we're just making sure that they're facing the other way. We're going up and we're just going to hit them a couple times with the sword and then we're going to run back around. 
And every time we run around this spire, they're going to lose track of where we are. Like I said, it just makes it a little bit easier. And you want to kind of take wide arcs when you're approaching them because you don't want to just rush directly to them as they might see you in their like peripheral vision, I guess. So you don't want them to spot you that way. So you kind of want to take a little wide arc as you're approaching them so they don't see you. As you can tell, I killed one of the hunters, and he's going to be a little bit more jumpy. So you can see he's turning around rapidly. He's making sure he's covering all his angles. It's going to be near impossible to just sneak up behind him like normal. So we're going to go up here, and we're going to switch to our motion sensor just to kind of get a good idea of where he is. And that way we can at least see where he's facing. And after we know that he's going to be facing away from where we're going to be dropping from, we can get our back smack that way. So you drop down, get another back smack, finish the hunter off, and you're good to go. Give me a second. So after you're done watching the cutscene for that one, we're going to make our way back, and there will be a warthog, if you need it, uh, crashed where the Spartan core was. So you can feel free to grab that, and I'm just mapping out my route in order to get to the northern spire here and again i'm just gonna make our way over there feel free to follow my path if you have the banshee perfect you're set just make your way over Now, like I said, if you had the Banshee, you could just fly directly into the Spire and start working on the enemies there. But if you have the Warhog like I did here, I like going in the approach of going below and grappling my way up. And that way I can just start picking off a lot of these skimmers here. Now, the skimmers, all of them will have rocket launchers. So you want to be careful that you're not far away from too many of them. Or else they'll start lobbing rockets at you, and with the boom and cowbell skull, it's going to be pretty difficult to manage. And if you want, the Spartan Core will be on top of the Spire. I like to upgrade one shot into the grappling hook and the threat sensor, just so I can have that niche use of... I can see further with the threat sensor, and I can stun enemies with the grappling hook if need be. So we're going to take a look at the two ghost elites that are going to be there. Those guys are going to be kind of annoying. And this is really the only threatening part of this section, as they do a lot of damage and they're pretty annoying to deal with. But we're just going to start shooting some of the rockets at it, and we're going to get a little bit closer so we can throw dynamos at them if they're still alive. But if you were able to take care of them both that way, we're just going to make our way and start meleeing some of the skimmers. You can see there's still one more ghost there. Now, one more thing to note, and I'm going to be cutting ahead a little bit in the video, uh, after clearing out most of the enemies here is that with the cowbell skull on you saw that I launched that ghost pretty far and the reason why I'm going to be cutting ahead in the video is because that elite essentially got lost and I had to wait for him to come back before I was able to, to progress because if he doesn't die from fall damage or the phys physics doesn't kill him or the rocket didn't kill him the section will not trigger that he died and in order to progress in this, you have to kill every enemy in the vicinity. And so if you just launch him and he doesn't die, it's not going to register that he's dead. You're not going to be able to progress. And you're essentially just going to be stuck there unless he finds his way back. Or you reset a checkpoint or like kill yourself in order to force a checkpoint. So you can see I cut ahead there because the elite finally managed to make his way back. And after we finish killing him here, we're ready to progress through the main section. Now after you're done with that one, you can actually just fast travel back to the command spire section, which was where we were at the start of this mission. So you can just fast travel back there, no need for any kind of vehicles, you can just quickly get there. So after you've made your way over to the command spire part, what we're going to be doing is as you get closer to the actual spire itself a phantom will be spawning in and he'll be dropping off a lot of different enemies and there's going to be a lot of elites that you're going to have to look out for so as you get closer we're just going to take out some of the grunts that are already on the ground to shoot a rocket or two finish those guys off 
and then we'll progress to our main strategy here. Like I said, you want to be careful of all the elites, because if you get too close to them, you're going to have three of them, four of them just rushing at you with swords, and even with the strategy, you're not going to be able to handle three hitting you at once. So you want to just be careful that you're using your dynamos effectively, making sure you're stunning as many as possible, that way you're limiting the amount of enemies that are actually able to fight back and bring it to a more manageable level. Now we're also going to be cutting back and forth here as well because with the boom skull those first couple rockets I launched ended up launching this guy to kingdom come and I was here for probably like 10 minutes trying to find this dude could not find him and he eventually just found his way back after I roamed around the spire for a while. But anyway, we finally managed to kill them all, and now we'll make our way down, and then we'll have officially completed the sequence in Lasso. The Harbinger. He's here. Good. Hope you guys found this guide helpful. If you did, stay tuned, and I'll be uploading more Halo Infinite Lasso guides. And if you want, I'll still be planning on streaming. It's been a little rough trying to set everything up, but I do plan on starting streaming around New Year's. So if it seems like something you'd be interested in, Feel free to check it out. I'd appreciate any kind of support. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the Nexus.